What's up guys, it's Amanda. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video I am going to be talking all about how I design my own stickers and kind of by extension how I create designs for my Redbubble shop. So I'm going to kind of be demonstrating the two ways that I make and sell my artwork. One of the ways being through hand making my own stickers and selling them through Store Envy. And the second way is by creating designs and uploading them to Redbubble. So first of all, to design my stickers, whether they're traditional or digital, I use my laptop with Photoshop CS5 and a Huion graphics tablet. I'll have more information about kind of the programs that I use and the tablet linked down below. I got mine from Amazon and part of the reason I picked this one is because it's very reasonably priced and for someone like me who doesn't do digital art all that often I find that it's the perfect fit for me so I'll have more information on this link down below first I kind of just wanted to demonstrate how I design stickers using more traditional means and I did this by kind of taking a sample of my own handwriting and writing the words freaking out and I bring this and I scan it first and then I bring it into Photoshop and I kind of tweak it a little bit. I mess with the um, layers and just make sure that the blacks are as black as I want them and the whites are as white as I want them. Then I usually like to add a stroke or which is or a drop shadow, which is kind of what you see me doing here. Um, the two are kind of interchangeable for me, but you can kind of see with the more digital uh, sorry, with the traditional images when you scan them in, sometimes you get these random little bits of the paper texture. So the drop shadow will also enhance all of those, um, which is why I'm kind of going in with the eraser tool now and cleaning up all those little bumps that I don't want, just so that this white outline looks a little bit more clean and crisp and that it's even all the way around. Um, I did this just because I wanted the text to stand out a little bit, and I didn't really end up keeping it this opaque in the final sticker I ended up decreasing the opacity and kind of blurring the edges a bit but regardless this is an important step just to kind of ensure that the clarity of your image is there so I'm just kind of really taking the time to carefully do this um, you can kind of mess around with whether you prefer a stroke or a drop shadow and you do that by just clicking the little FX part on the uh, layer tab that is how you kind of get to that and you can mess with the sizing and like I said the opacity and all of the things like that. Um, but once I kind of have this cleaned up then I will kind of uh, delete the background so that it's a translucent image and then I will copy and paste that on top of this image here which I also um, drew traditionally scanned it in and I deleted all of the white in the background just because again I want this to be um, a transparent in the background that way it's a sticker um, and it, it also helps I, I do this step mostly when I'm making designs for both stickers and for red bubble designs and I kind of just like to cross my T's and dot my I's the entire way through because it makes it easier to use a design for both. And so creating the translucent background um, file will help later on with when we upload the design to Redbubble. Um, so now you can kind of see I'm just tweaking the image a little bit, making sure the sizing is right and everything looks how I want it to look. And once I am happy with that, then I can go ahead and save it. And again, I kind of like to always make sure by having the black background there that I'm <laughs> uh, not missing anything. And you can see when I added the stroke um, behind the flowers that there was, again, a lot of that paper texture that was enhanced. Um, and that's something that, again, I'm just kind of careful to erase because if that was still lingering around when I uploaded the image to Redbubble, it may potentially ruin the quality there. So I'm doing the same thing where I add a thick stroke around the flowers and then I'm going in with my eraser tool and just cleaning it up and kind of just making sure that the uh, stroke looks the way that I want it and that everything's kind of, you know, coming to, to look the, the way my, I see it in my head. Um, then the thing that I'll do is I'll add a stroke around the drop shadow. So the white part is a drop shadow, then the stroke is the outline around the drop shadow. And this is optional, but it does kind of help you to um, 
have a guide when you print out your stickers and you kind of know where to cut around so that you have enough white space and that was what I chose to do with this sticker in particular obviously I would hide both of these effects when uploading the sticker to Redbubble just because I don't really want a useless outline there for no reason but for the sake of printing them out and making it a sticker I like to have this white border and the stroke to highlight the white border so now I'm going to be designing another sticker and this one I'm going to be designing primarily digitally. So you can see I kind of have like a very rough pencil sketch that I created traditionally. I scan that in, drag and drop the file into Photoshop and now I'm doing the line art of the sketch digitally. I'm doing this pretty straightforward. I'm just using these standard Photoshop brushes and I'm kind of just making sure to keep the brush the same size all the way around. That way the image looks uniform. I'm just using blacks for the outlines. Uh, I just wanted this sticker to be simple. I feel like if you're designing your stickers, something to keep in mind is using limited color palettes and just trying to keep your lines really simple and clear. Typically when I'm doing stickers, I will opt for something like cell shading over a more blended painterly look just because it's easier for the eye to read when the image is shrunken down. So as you can see for this design, I am drawing a bunch of lipsticks and just kind of another note about this design in particular. This was actually the design that I created for Pride Month. Happy Pride, everybody. Um, if you guys don't know, June is uh, Pride Month, which uh, is a time when we get to celebrate all of the brave individuals in the LGBT community. And um, this sticker was kind of my ode to them. And so to all of you guys out there in the LGBT community, I hope you are having a very safe and happy pride um, and this sticker is for you. So I have these seven lipsticks drawn out and just a couple of like shortcuts that I do, especially if I'm in designing a sticker and I'm not necessarily trying to make sure every little thing is perfect. A lot of the times I will use the lasso tool to copy and paste like the cylindrical shapes of the lipstick tubes and then I will just transform each one to make it look a little bit different than the other ones and I will do that to kind of just speed the process along so that is what I did. I'll flip them around so that they look different um, and you know that it looks like I drew seven individual lipsticks but really I just drew <laughs> like three and then copy and pasted them and transformed them to look different. Um, and now kind of moving on to colors. One thing I should note is that this file is in CMYK. Something I'm still trying to figure out with both Photoshop and my laptop and the printer that I have is the, the differentiation between the colors, especially RGB and CMYK. I've been having a really hard time printing uh, colors accurately on my Epson printer. And so I'm trying to work in CMYK just to get a better idea of what it's actually going to look like printed. So it actually looks a little bit more desaturated on my screen, but the colors end up looking more accurate when I print them out. So I picked out basically the most true forms of all of the colors of the rainbow and I kind of just swatched those up there at the top because those will be the colors of the lipsticks themselves momentarily. But first, I'm just coloring all of the tubes of the lipsticks. I wanted them all to be different, kind of just to go along with this diversity theme that like everybody's different. They come in different shapes and sizes, and in this case, finishes um, and colors. Uh, so I wanted to kind of just play along with that theme a little bit. And so I am just kind of coloring them and shading them individually another thing I should note another disclaimer um, 10 minutes into the video if you haven't figured it out yet I am NOT a digital art expert I know Photoshop but I am self-taught so the things that I do in Photoshop and the way that I do them are not necessarily the best way um, and they're not necessarily the fastest way so I know I could do like clipping masks and all of that and probably speed this process along but you know it is what it is I'm I'm not an expert I don't claim to be um, pretty much everything I do know to know about Photoshop I've taught myself or you know taken it upon myself to research and figure out but that being said I probably still do things uh, in a little bit of a different way so that being said just just cut me some slack if you are a digital art expert and you're cringing at me coloring this in right now just you know keep that in mind <laughs> I am a marker and watercolor kind of girl. Um, 
But anyway, so I tried to limit the tubes to like three, four different colors primarily. I have two that are black and I wanted to make sure that they were both on the ends just to kind of frame the sticker and ground the edges. Um, and then I have like two that are kind of a taupey color, two that are silver, and then one that is gold. And like, like I said, they're all different sizes and shapes and, and all of that. So um, yeah, and then I made sure obviously to have seven lipsticks so that I could uh, have a lipstick for each color of the rainbow case you didn't get like where this is going by now um, but I don't think this took me very long I think this took me about an hour hour and a half start to finish with kind of tweaking everything and coloring it and getting the line art in so it didn't take me very long and like I said I like to keep my sticker designs really simple I don't focus too much on every little detail being correct just because it would be kind of a waste of time you wouldn't really see the details that much anyway with the stickers being as small as they are so I wouldn't bother investing too much time in every little detail at this point. Um, but now I'm kind of getting ready to add the colors of the lipsticks. It's very much the same thing. I kind of just do a base color and then I do a little bit of a darker color, a little bit of a highlight just to give it some dimension. Again, I'm trying not to throw in too many colors or make it too crazy detailed just because, you know, it, it doesn't always look as good printed either. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, but this process, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. One thing that I will kind of get into talking about is um, how I save these files, because that gets a little bit all over the place. Um, I, I do something similar with this sticker that I did with the Freaking Out sticker where I add like a stroke or a drop shadow to it. And I do that primarily because when I upload to Redbubble, I wanna make sure that the design looks equally as good on a white t-shirt as it does on a black t-shirt. And that can be really tricky, especially if you are like me and you like to use a lot of pure white or pure black elements in your piece because usually one of those elements will get lost in one of the colored t-shirts either if it's white or if it's black so it can be a little bit tricky to troubleshoot that and it's really just going to come down to you playing around with it but i always like to have a layer that is full black and a layer that is full white and i'll kind of switch between them just to see how the design looks on both backgrounds and that's kind of what you can see me doing here you can see i'm trying to add the drop shadow and it just did not look as clean as I wanted to and then I went to add the stroke but the stroke was covering the whole line art I realize now that I was stupid and should have merged my line art and color layer and that this wouldn't have been a problem um, so I may go back and do that and kind of tweak the design on Redbubble to reflect that that way it's just a little bit cleaner and I don't have to worry about um, restricting any of the designs to only being available on a white or black backdrop or a light color or dark color backdrop. Um, and then kind of as a finishing touch, I wanted to add some text. So I decided to do that and I decided to add the words, be you, be proud. Again, kind of all within this theme of pride and the LGBT community and kind of just showing my support for them. Um, and then that's pretty much the final design. I end up resizing the text a little bit to just be a bit bigger, but you can see I'm kind of saving my file now. And one thing that is important to note is that if your file is in CMYK, you're not gonna be able to save this as a PNG file. So what you wanna do is copy and paste your merged layers into a different document, making sure you're using an RGB color profile and that will allow you to save it as a PNG, which will then allow you to upload it to Redbubble. Kind of feel like I'm talking all over the board right now. It's just like, there's a lot of information to give and I feel like it's really hard to break it down. Um, obviously, if you guys have more detailed questions, feel free to shoot me a comment or shoot me a message. Um, I'd be happy to kind of talk this through with you a little bit more. Um, I'm also now realizing that there's a period after be you, but not after be proud. So 
looks like I'm gonna have to be reprinting these but um, I thought it actually might be a cool idea if I gave these stickers away in my online store this month uh, so if any of you make a purchase on my store envy shop I will throw in one of these misprinted stickers um, for free so if that's something that you are interested in uh, you can check out my store envy the link is down below but now you can see I am constructing the sticker sheet so I do this by creating a new document that is sized to eight and a half by 11 inches I make sure the background is white I make sure to have my margins so that they will not be cut off during printing usually about a quarter inch on all sides and then I am just dragging and dropping the sticker design into the document and kind of copying and pasting it making sure everything's sized right and fitting all of the stickers that I can fit onto a single page and then I am saving this as either a PDF or a JPEG depending on your preference um, it doesn't really make a difference to me um, I usually save them as JPEG but I've been kind of playing around with PDFs just to see if I get more consistent printing or not maybe it doesn't make a difference I don't really know um, but you can see I saved it as both for the sake of redundancy all right, so I just went ahead and opened up that PDF file and now I am getting ready to print it. So I make sure obviously that I have the proper printer selected and then I go to the print settings tab and I just make sure that the paper type is correct. Obviously that's going to depend on the kind of sticker paper that you have and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but I just want to make sure that it's at the highest printing quality and that the paper type is correct because those two things can greatly impact the quality of your print. So it's important to make sure that is all correct. And then you want to go ahead and hit print. Now the sticker paper that I'm using here is a vinyl sticker paper. I will link it to where I got it down below. I purchased it on Amazon. I like it. I, I'm still willing to shop around for sticker papers though, but I would recommend that you buy something that is a little bit higher quality than just your standard sticker paper that you would use for printing like shipping labels. Uh, you could do that, but just be well aware that the quality may not be as good and the longevity of your stickers is not going to be as high. So I actually got pretty lucky with this round and the color accuracy was pretty good for the first time printing. So I'm kind of bummed that I misprinted the text. Um, but what I like to do is cut them into um, kind of more manageable sizes. So I cut the sheet in half and then cut each sticker out individually. And then optionally, you can take your scissors and round out the edges and kind of just leave that white gap. Again, this is sometimes why I like to add the stroke around the drop shadow so that I have a guide to follow. But in this case, I didn't really feel like I needed the guide and I just kind of decided to wing it a little bit. Um, obviously, you could leave your stickers in the rectangular form if that is what you prefer stylistically. I kind of prefer to cut them out by hand and just give them a little bit more of a unique shape and flair. It's a personal preference though. It's not that it changes the quality in any way in my opinion. Um, so this is just what I like to do for my stickers. Now, really quickly, I am just going to run through how you upload a design to Redbubble. So you want to go to Redbubble in your browser, and obviously if you do not have a Redbubble account, you want to go ahead and create one. Um, basically, it's a very simple drag and drop your file to upload it to the site kind of thing, and then it automatically kind of gives you a mock-up of your design on all of their merchandise that they offer. So basically what I like to do is just go through one by one and make sure that the image is sized properly, that it's um, horizontally or vertically aligned, that it looks good on all the different colors, or that if it doesn't look good on that particular item, that I disable it and make sure that it's not available for sale. Um, so that is just something that I like to do and I really do like to take my time at this part and just make sure that everything looks the way that I want it to look um, and this is where it really comes in handy to have two versions of your PNG file saved one that favors a lighter backdrop and one that favors a darker backdrop so just that way you have the versatility it really does matter um, I tend to favor just a black or a white backdrop I like to keep things simple that way um, but even if you do venture out into more colorful backdrops, I do think that this is an important thing to consider, uh, both when you're making your design and then also when you are getting ready to upload your design and possibly creating multiple versions of the same design. 
to favor multiple backdrops. Anyway, that was a really long-winded way to describe that. Uh, you can kind of just see me going through all of the products here and tweaking it and kind of deciding whether or not I like a product and if I don't, obviously not enabling it for sale. Um, but it is available on a lot of different things including phone cases, iPad cases, laptop cases, pillows, coffee mugs, journals, all that good stuff. So if you are interested in purchasing any of the items uh, featured in this video, you can obviously click the links down below and um, check it out. I would obviously greatly appreciate that. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you didn't, please, please tell me what I could do better. Um, tutorials for me, I feel a little rusty with them to be honest. I, I feel like I don't really know what I'm doing and uh, I would appreciate your feedback in any way. Um, but that is pretty much it. That is how I create stickers and that is how I create designs for Redbubble. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I appreciated it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and I will see you guys next week with a brand new video. Bye guys!